Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Commander Jessica Woody, Director of Officer Development School. On behalf of the Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Development School Class 22060, consisting of 172 officers. Military guests in uniform, this will be a covered ceremony. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. Momentarily, Captain Alcorn, United States Navy Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, and Rear Admiral Rick Friedman, Director, Medical Systems Integration and Combat Survivability, and Chief Navy Dental Corps will arrive. The guests and class will arise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. Captain Alcorn and Rear Admiral Friedman will then address the graduating class. Following the remarks, Captain Alcorn will distribute the class awards. Following the award presentation, the graduates will symbolize the completion of their training by returning their company guidons to their class chief petty officers. Following the guidon presentation, the class will remain standing for the oath of office and remain standing for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Rear Admiral, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Fosnot will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, you have called us from the ends of the earth to unite as one body in service to our country. We bring our special skills to make a difference in the life of the most junior sailor and Marine. May we never forget we are called to a lifetime of service. We thank you for our friends and families that have supported us through our education and training. Much will be demanded of them in the future. Lord, bless them with faith, hope, and love. Protect us as we travel to home or to a new duty station. Go before us, and may we all do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We pray this in your eternal name. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command, Newport. Rear Admiral Freeman, Rear Admiral Goggins, distinguished visitors, Officer Training Command staff, family and friends joining us today, and shipmates of Officer Development School Class 22060, good morning. It is an absolute honor for me to have this opportunity to welcome this class into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in our nation, that of Naval Officer. Today we will bear witness as Class 22060 renews a solemn promise to our nation, reaffirming their oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States as professional Naval Officers. For the families joining us, I want to both thank you and commend you for the performance of your sons and daughters husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the quality individuals seated here, ones who not only chose vocations that helped their fellow human being, but chose a path of service to their fellow citizens. I can think of no finer group to go forward into the fleet than the officers seated here today. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family. On behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you and well done. To the class, I'm proud of you and all that you've accomplished while you're here. As you depart for schools and duty stations, know that you're about to be placed in a position to lead and mentor what are truly one of the most valuable national products, the enlisted men and women of our Navy. Those that volunteer to serve are precious national resource, so you must always treat them as such. The foundations we have laid here at ODS are solid. It is now up to you to build upon this as you enter the Naval Service. I'm very impressed with the effort you have expended over the last several weeks. I want to thank you for all that you have done and will do in the service of this great nation of ours. It is my pleasure and distinct honor to welcome you to the wardroom as professional Naval officers in the world's finest Navy. It's my honor this morning to introduce you to our guest speaker, Rear Admiral Rick Friedman, Director, Medical Service Systems Integration and Combat Survivability, Office of the Chief of Naval Operation, and Chief Dental Corps. Rear Admiral Dental Friedman is a native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He earned his bachelor's degree of science from the University of Pittsburgh and a doctorate in medical dentistry from the University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine. He holds a master's degree in health sciences from George Washington University and a certificate in comprehensive dentistry from the Naval Postgraduate Dental School. Operationally, he served aboard the USS Inchon as dental department head during the ship's final deployment and deployed aboard the USS Boxer in support of Operation Continuing Promise. He's also deployed as commanding officer of the NATO Multinational Medical Unit, Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan, in support of Operation Freedom Sentinel and Operation Resolute Support. His executive assignments include Officer in Charge Naval Branch Health Clinic Atlanta, Georgia, and Officer in Charge Naval Branch Health Clinic Oceana, Virginia. He served as Executive Officer, U.S. Naval Hospital Okinawa, Japan, and commanded Naval Hospital Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Staff assignments include Assistant Deputy Chief Healthcare Operations at the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, Navy's Medicine Project Lead for Transformational Activities Related to the Implementation of the 2017 and 2019 National Defense Authorization Act, an executive assistant to the Navy Surgeon General. Previous assignments include 2nd Dental Battalion, 2nd Force Service Support Group in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, Retreat Canyon Command, Naval Dental Center, Orlando, Florida, Branch Dental Clinic, Pax River, Maryland, and Naval Branch Health Clinic, Jacksonville, Florida. He is a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives and a member of the Interagency Institute for Federal Healthcare Executives. He is also recognized as a diplomat of the American Board of General Dentistry, a fellow of the Academy of General Dentistry, and one of the original representatives on the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery's Oral Health Advisory Board, and has served as faculty for Navy Medicine Professional Development Center's Clinical Managers course. He also served as the director of American Dental Association Accredited Advanced Education and General Dentistry Residency Program in Jacksonville, Florida. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we're truly fortunate to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today,
Chief of the Dental Corps, Rear Admiral Rick Friedman. Well, thank you so much, uh, Captain Alcorn, for that kind introduction. Special welcomes to Rear Admiral Goggins, distinguished guests, colleagues, staff members, future Navy medicine family, and friends gathered with us today. It's an absolute honor and privilege to be with you this morning and celebrate this amazing milestone with all of you. Are you motivated? The answer is yes, you are. So it's hard for, to believe for me that I was sitting where you are today 31 short years ago. And believe me, things back then were much, much different than they are today. Gas was just about over a dollar a gallon. Think about that. There were pay phones all around this base and in all the barracks that you're in right now. And Tom Cruise's Maverick was flying F-14s for the Navy. Well, maybe things aren't so much different than they were. And I, I should have said, spoiler alert, for those of you who weren't able to see a movie, I just spoiled it a little bit for you, but uh, you'll hear about it later. And while many things are different, one thing that remains unchanged is, this, that, is that this day marks an incredible milestone in the professional lives of our graduates. A true rite of passage, if you will, that officially marks the entry of 172 of our country's best and brightest professionals into our Navy Officer Corps. Graduates, you are joining less than the 1% of all Americans who have stepped forward to wear the cloth of our nation and actively defend our freedoms. Whether you serve for one tour or whether you make the Navy a career, you will always be able to say that you actively embraced the opportunity to serve our country and a cause greater than yourself. And for that, I salute you. And I challenge you to make your time in uniform count. One thing I will promise you today is that each and every one of you is in a position to live a life of consequence, one of significance. Most importantly, you will be positioned to have a, pro a profound impact on the sailors, Marines you lead, and the Navy and the nation that you serve. If you remember nothing else from today, please remember thank you. Thank you for giving so much of yourself in service to others, to our Navy, and to our nation. But I'd also like to extend that thank you to those in attendance today. As Captain Alcorn mentioned, I'm certain that our graduates will be the first to point out that reaching this point in their journey to become a commissioned officer was not something they could accomplish on their own. That it takes the love, support, guidance, and encouragement of so many in their lives. So I'd ask you to join me in recognizing and thanking those family members and friends that are here with us today, as well as those instructors that have supported you in advancing this important milestone. Now graduates, as you begin this journey, I would like to share some hard-won insights from my career and hope that they will be of value to you. First, always remember that mission one for every sail and marine, active and reserve, uniform and civilian, is the operational readiness readiness of today's naval force. Whether your specialty is serving as a JAG, chaplain, engineer, nuke, intel, supply, PAO, information warfare, dentist, nurse, physician, or part of the Medical Service Corps, this is your primary mission. Your curriculum here at ODS has included the fundamentals of leadership, and I emphasize the word fundamental because leadership is a perishable skill, one that you must continuously practice and refine and you must have the humility to understand that you will never master all of its nuances. You will occasionally relearn hard-won lessons, and you must always strive to be a better leader tomorrow than you were today. I want you to hear this. You will become dinner table conversation, whereas someone with whom you briefly interact, you may not even remember that, earlier in the day, will recount in almost reverent ter terms to their loved ones later that evening that they saw you, that you stopped and you talked to them, you asked their opinion or asked for their advice, or you even remembered that you have family members or kids of the same age. That's how important your role as leader is. But remember, it's not about you, it's about what your position represents. I ask you to always remember that responsibility, that covenant, and hold that obligation in the forefront of your mind 
in everything that you do. The good news is that with time and effort, you will become a better leader, and the lessons you learned will become hardwired into your being, and you will make our sailors, our Marines, and our naval force even stronger. To me, leadership is what separates a military officer from your civilian contemporaries. From day one, at your first assignment, you will be responsible for others and their well-being. It's an amazing covenant and a true gift. Treat it as such. And for the majority of the ODS graduates with us today, you're heading into Navy medicine. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about our Surgeon General's priorities, our four Ps, our people, platforms, performance, and the power we deliver. Collectively, we have no higher priority than protecting the health of those entrusted to our care. And Navy medicine's priorities are direct, clear, and relevant. We provide well-trained people working as expeditionary medical experts on optimized platforms operating as cohesive teams demonstrating high reliability performance to project medical power in support of naval superiority. It's who we are and it's what we do. And while the four Ps is an easy phrase to remember, it's more important that you understand the order is deliberate and outline our priorities and describe our primary mission. So let's take a little closer look at some of those four Ps. People. People is the first P because people are our most valuable asset and our key to our future success. One of the key leadership lessons I want to make sure you understand today is that an individual can make a difference, but only a team can make a miracle. Your aptitude, intelligence, and hard work have prepared you to make a positive difference as a U.S. Naval officer, but you will be most successful if you learn how to build and lead effective teams. And speaking of team building, there is no more important asset for you to remember here today than to understand that you have an asset at your disposal, the Chief Petty Officer. Any Chief Petty Officers with us today? I know you're here, Chiefs. I'll give you a hoo -yah. anyway. There you go. Thank you, Chief Petty Officer. Well, hoo -yah, Chief. You will become masters of your profession, and you, you will eventually become clinical experts in your field. But the Chief Petty Officers are experts at leadership. Seek their advice with humility. Listen to what they have to tell you. They will not fail you. As, you. as the Navy prepares to conduct distributed maritime operations against a very capable adversary, we have to adapt our tactics, techniques, and procedures to prevail in an area of the world where the distances will be great and our ability to dominate the battle space will be very challenged. To this end, we are making significant advances to deliver new capabilities and platforms upon which we will operate. This includes adapting our forward surgical system, which has been used successfully with the Marines, and bringing that to the shipboard environment, to even include our submarines. We are also developing an ambulance ship to assist at-sea personnel recovery that will provide a float damage control surgery and be a vital link to our hospital ships. This will also require that we establish our own program for in route care, training corpsmen and nurses to fly with casualties over potentially very, very long distances. We know that our amazingly capable hospital ships are getting old, and we are in the process of looking at options for modernizing them. We are taking a close look as well as our land-based Roll 3 hospital system, the Expeditionary Medical Facility, to make it more mobile and flexible. Recognize there is significant work to do in developing and refining these capabilities is why platforms is our second P. The third P is performance. Simply put, our performance is measured by our support to the warfighter. We strive to emulate the attention to detail of our submarine force who have operated nuclear reactors aboard their submarines without a significant mishap since the 1950s, or the complex choreography naval aviation crews demonstrate on an aircraft carrier flight deck, or the teamwork and preparation of our Navy SEALs who believe that amateurs train until they, until they get it right but professionals train until they can't get it wrong. To provide the support that our line colleagues deserve, we can never be content with our performance. High reliability, high reliability organizations thrive on the, and expect rapid cycle feedback. This requires that we have the courage to face the brutal facts when we fall short. When we combine these three elements, extremely well-trained people operating on cutting edge platforms demonstrating high, reliable performance, we create the fourth P, power. 
projecting medical power in support of naval and Marine Corps warfighters ensures that we and they are ready to dominate the battle space and when engaged in a high-end fight, that we will provide them with the maximum uh, possible survivability. Their optimized performance and survivability is our contribution to their ability to produce lethality. Central to our ability to project medical power is leadership, as we talked about. We need thoughtful leaders who build inclusive teams that are empowered to take action and hold themselves accountable for their outcomes as they continuously strive to make each other better. As all of us in this room must fundamentally embrace that responsibility, you have to own it. You can delegate, but you are still fundamentally responsible and accountable. Building high performance teams require a keen understanding of people, their motivations, and their strengths. It also requires listening. As Dr. William Osler, the founder of Johns Hopkins Hospital, once said, referring to the art of medicine, listen to your patient, he is telling you the diagnosis. By listening more, leaders can identify specific barriers that constrain performance and impede mission accomplishment. So as you begin your careers as naval officers, you have enormous resources at your disposal. Use them to unleash your potential, but more importantly, the potential of those that you lead. Remember, an individual can make a difference, but only a team can make a miracle. That's especially true in our Navy. Congratulations, graduates. Best wishes for personal and professional success as you lead our Navy into the, to the future. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Alcorn and Admiral Friedman. At the conclusion of each ODS class, several students are recognized by their fellow classmates, as well as the OTCN staff for outstanding achievement during the five-week course of instruction. Lieutenant Madeline Ani, front and center. The Honor Student Award is presented to the officer who best demonstrates an overall excellence in the areas of academics, physical fitness, and military bearing, consistently setting the example for his or her peers, peers throughout the many challenges faced at Officer Training Command. The Honor Student Award goes to Lieutenant Madeline Ani. Ensign Shane Davis, front and center. The Alfred Award is given to the officer who achieves the highest military grade derived from personnel inspections, room inspections, and general military bearing. This award is named after the Continental Sloop of War, the Alfred. Commissioned in 1775, the Alfred served as the flagship of native Rhode Islander, Commodore Isaac Hopkins, serving as a role model of Navy pride and professionalism, maintaining the highest military standards and providing inspiration to all. The Alfred Award goes to Ensign Shane Davis. Ensign Arthur Akiwa, front and center. The Captain George Townsend Smith Leadership Award is presented to the officer who personifies the highest standards of personal example, good leadership practices, and moral responsibility. Officers were nominated by their peers and selected by the Officer Training Command staff. The Captain George Townsend Smith Leadership Award goes to Ensign Arthur Akiwa.
Ensign Emily Horton, front and center. The Eady Award is named for Lieutenant Thomas Eady, United States Navy. It recognizes the highest achievement in academic and military performance. Lieutenant Thomas Eady, who immigrated from Scotland and settled in Rhode Island, was awarded the Navy Cross and the Medal of Honor for his courageous efforts as a diver, salvaging the submarines SS-4 and SS-51 off the coast of Massachusetts. As a member of the Southeastern New England chapter of the Retired Officers Association at the time of his death in, 17, in 1974, in recognition of this accomplishment and in addition to the Certificate of Achievement, the Military Officers Association of America has also provided a three-year membership to the Edie Award winner, Ensign Emily Horton. <laughs> For the past five weeks, the company Guide On has been a symbol of dedication, teamwork, and unit identity. To symbolize the fact that these officers seated before you have completed their training, they will return the guide on to their class chief petty officers, Chief Hospital Corpsman David Long and Chief Gunner's mate Christopher Lawrence. Lieutenant Pardue will now deliver the reaffirmation of the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer of Officer Training Command would like to present to you your newly reaffirmed Naval Officers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal.
Officer Development School, Class 22060. Upon graduation from Officer Development School, you are ordered to detach and report to your duty stations, where you will assume your duties and responsibilities by order of Everett Alcorn, Captain, United States Navy, Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of the Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command, thank you for attending today's graduation. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.